Hello crafty friends, my name is Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl, and I am here with a project for Not Too Shabby. Today I will be using some of the goodies from their newest box of the month, along with the November 2022 sheet load of cards, to make three quick and easy cards using pattern paper and ephemera. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Not Too Shabby's latest box of the month is called Holiday Sparkle, and it contains two different themes. The first one is a New Year's theme, and the second one is the one you see in front of me, a farmhouse Christmas. A few days ago, I participated in one of the hops for the release, and I used the New Year's theme goodies. I will link that video in the description box below if you want to check it out. Today, I'm going to be using the pattern paper and ephemera from the box of the month to create three quick and easy cards using the November 2022 sheet load of cards. The November 2022 sheet load of cards is a special split panel edition, which means that we take a chunk out of the front of the card. Now it originally called to use 12 by 12 paper to yield 18 cards, but today I'm going to be using that six by six paper from the box of the month and making a smaller sheet load. As I start the process, I will tell you about any other tools or products that I use, but if I do leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I chose three pieces of pattern paper from the Christmas on the Farm pad. I have a more colorful pattern with the trucks and trees, and then I chose a couple more subtle patterns that went with the colors and patterns in the first one. Since I am using 6x6 paper, I will be using the single card cutting dimensions from the November 2022 printable. The first cut I'm going to make is at 4 inches, and that leaves me with a 4 inch and a 2 inch strip. The 2 inch strip I cut to 4 inches tall, and then on the 4 inch wide strip I'm going to cut a piece that is 1 and a quarter inches tall, and then 2 and a half inches tall. There is a pretty good sized scrap left at the bottom when you're done getting your three pieces. So originally I was just gonna set these to the side and use it for a different project, but later you will see me actually use it today to create a fourth card. I cut the remaining two pattern papers in the same way. Now don't worry about writing down any of these dimensions. I will link the video in the description box below that tells you how you can download that free printable. After I did all that cutting, I realized that those scraps could probably make another card. Now the reason this worked out is because the red pattern paper did not have a specific orientation. It could be turned either way. Because the truck piece is only two and a quarter inches tall, you will have to do your cutting slightly different. So you might want to jot these down if you're going to try to get the four cards out of the three six by sixes. Since the horizontal pieces are already four inches wide, I'm just going to cut the green piece that will be at the top of the card to one and a half inches tall. So this is a little bit different than the previous one and a quarter. The red piece was already at four inches, so I just cut that down to two inches wide to get my third piece. I already had some top fold card bases in my stash, so I brought four of those in for today's cards. Now for the first three, the cutting for the front is going to be the same as on the printable. You cut the two and three quarter inch piece off the bottom, then a strip at one and a quarter inch. Now the one and a quarter inch can be saved for a future project. 
And then for the fourth one, since it's a little bit different, I cut the bottom piece at two and a half inches instead of two and three quarters, but I did cut the same middle piece at one and a quarter inches. Finally, for the cutting, you will need a mat for your vertical piece. I got out a single piece of white cardstock, cut it in half at four and a quarter inches wide, and then I rotated and cut until I had four pieces that were two and a quarter inches. The next thing I did was mix and match the pieces for the final cards. Now because the one is unique and different sized, I did remove those pieces first from my work surface. And then I went in and I grabbed one piece from each of the patterns from each of the sizes. I'm going to show you on screen how I put together one of the cards, but I won't go into too much detail. I do already have a process video on my channel that gives you more tips and tricks to put your cards together. I will make sure to link that in the description box below as well. But for now, here's some music and a little process. You'll notice here when all four of the cards are together, the one on the right which has the different dimensions is just slightly different. The original sketch calls for a circle for your image or sentiment, but I'm actually going to be using some ephemera for my focal point. I did want to go ahead and have the circle element though, so I brought in a stitch circle die, a snowflake embossing folder, and some scraps of vellum. I like how this will help the ephemera stand out from the background and it has that little added texture of the snowflakes. Off camera I decided which pieces of ephemera I wanted on each card and I just laid them out roughly here in front of me. I will be using some art glitter glue to adhere my ephemera pieces to the vellum and then the vellum to the front of the cards. I am going to try my best to hide any adhesive from the front and make sure that I don't put adhesive on the back of the vellum so that it would hear the cards closed. Once I had my ephemera onto my vellum, I let these sit for about five minutes to dry and then off camera I added my focal points to the card fronts. I wanted to add a little bit of sparkle before I called these cards done, so I brought in the shaker mix from the box of the month, and I will be adding three of the red confetti pieces to the front of each card. Some I put on the vellum circles, and then I usually put one on the inside too, so there was a little decoration when you opened it up. Here are some close-up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together this quick quartet of cards using the latest box of the month from Not Too Shabby. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until the next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.